And thanks, Frank, thanks for very much, the Rick. program. So uh, due to the lack of time, we we'll just get right into that. Okay. At the beginning of the 17th century, the clamor raised in Italy by the publication of Gagualini di Parnasso, 1612, um, and Pietra di Paragone Politico, 1615, by Traiano Boccalini, caused uh, the hype of a minor literature of propaganda nature, which is an expression of historical political unrest due to the growing antagonism between the representatives of the Spanish crown and the states of Venice and Savoy. These exacerbated uh, conflict culminating in the controversial episode of Conspiracy of Venice of 1618 inevitably um, forces contemporary researchers to become supporters of one side or the other, originating in such, such a way an endless pro uh, profusion of pamphlets invectives and controversial writings of all kinds, which often result in violent verbal skirm skirmish between their own authors. This is also the case of the alleged controversy between Francisco de Quevedo and Giacomo Castellani and, uh, that we see in the following. The reasons for the extensive development of such a paraliterary production must be sought not only in the successful Boccalinian cliche of Pietra di Paragone, an example of fun literature conveying moral and political puns. At the same time, it refers to the events of Monferrato and especially to the piece of Asti, which wakes up strong concerns in Italian people about the risky exploits of Duke Carlos Manuel de Savoya. I also would like to mention the publication at the end of uh, 1614, uh, Felipe eh, Contro gli Espanoli di Alessandro Tassoni, which opens the way to ironic anti Spanish allegories of Pietra and to the circulation already in 1614 in handwritten and anonymous version of Discorso Fatto al, al, uh, Italia, un gentil uomo intorno alle azioni e disegni de, del catol, cattolico re di Spagna. Lastly, one cannot neglect the circumstance in which Pietra di Paragone was published under the influence of expansionist fancy of Duke of Savoy. Um, this convoluted political cultural uh, context marks the beginning of an in, extensive production of propaganda works inspired by a paradigm of Dragali. Uh, the paraliterary genre devised by Boccalini becomes an effective and indispensable instrument of political dissemination. And it is very likely that the courts of many Italian states even recruit anonymous label lists to compose defamatory writing, writings against their political enemies. That is what Victoriano Roncero held to support the idea of establishment of Spanish vice royalty of Na Naples during the second decade of the 17th century. Naples would become um, a true center of pro uh, uh, proportion of the civil pseudo -liter literature, giving rise to a campaign of anti-Spanish pamphlets and leaflets promoted by the Republic of France. And it is precisely in this tense political climate, Francisco de Quevedo composed La República de Venecia, especially the three corresponding and scathing pro-Venetian respo responses, Annotazioni, Allegazione, and Castigo Esemplare de Calumninatori. In them, the, the author Giacomo Castellani, hiding under the pseudonym Valerio Fluvio Sa uh, Savoyano, he refutes exhaustively uh, the statements exhibited in the Spanish label. When in the second half of the 1617 Quevedo's work, the, the Republic of Venice began to circulate handwritten in, in Italy, pro Venetians and sympathizers of Duke Savoya reacted um, immediately with the strong indignation in the face of the infamous criticism contained in the pamphlet 
For his part, Valerio Fluvio, Giacomo Castellani, immediately takes charge of revenge in favor of the Serenissima, Venice, concretizing, in, uh, concretizing it in 61 aggressive annotazioni that accompany the notice, uh, the warning in its first annotated edition appeared in 1618. And then Castellani, by going through specific historical quotes taken from renowned Italian and Spanish authors, Bembo, Sabellico, Mariana, Aleman, and Ijescas, among others, systematically answers the accusations of, of an anonymous pamphleteer criticizing against Spain the violent reproach directed to Venice. It is interesting to learn that Castellani provided a biography of Bartolomé de las Casas, the Spanish priest who warned Spanish conquistadores not to use violent methods to evangelize Latin American indigenous people in a controversial framework that underlines an anti-Spanish value totally absent in the original biographical work written by Miguel Le Pio. In this way, Castellani aims to draw parallelism between the Spanish presence in Italy versus the Spanish and Portuguese conquest of in Indies condemned by Bartolomé de las Casas. For Castellani, the thought of Spanish uh, Dominican priest Bartolomé de las Casas becomes a very effective propaganda weapon against the Spanish monarch that will corroborate the purpose of his two uh, allegations and discredit the greatness of Spain. Despite of all this, his vengeful desire still does not subside and shortly after compose his third and final responses in Castigo uh, Exemplare. There, Castellani uses the technique of retaliation, highly praised by uh, the Spanish um, uh, picaresque novelist, uh, Baltasar Gracian, to retaliate Spain for its anti-Venetian accusations. Castellani conceives his uh, Castigo Exemplare as a continuation, a sequel of Gavira's pamphlet, imagining that uh, the events have been interrupted where the Spanish uh, pamphleteer had finished his warning, Aviso, Castellani begins his label by recounting Apollo's amazement and suspicions, uh, suspicions in the face of the unexpected fall from grace of the very serene and to the unusual empathy, antipathy of Queen of Italy towards her own Venice, until then his favorite among the kingdoms of the peninsula. Castellani uses Focalini as one of his fictional characters here, and in fact, he is the sole holder of the true stone of the Paragon politician, who quick, uh, quickly discovers the false identity of the three liars who had arrived at Parnassus by presenting themselves respectively as Queen of, the, Queen of Italy, the Republic of Venice, and the Duke of Savoy. Questions and subjected to severe torment, the, the Queen of Italy confesses that there are nothing but two sad women and a Spanish lover for one of them, whose intention was to discredit Italian governments, Venice and Savoy, and Italy itself to redeem the reputation of Spanish crown already lost because of its excessive in, interference in the European political affairs. Once the process is finished, the Delphic monarch will proclaim the following great punishment against the three rogues. The anti-Spanish sentiment can be noticeable from the beginning of Cast uh, Castigo Exemplare, when the speculation of the virtuous Parnassians on, on the unusual arrival of Venice at, at the court of Apollo provides the occasion to Castellani to sketch an outrageous picture of Spain. If Castellani's uh, portrayal of Spain induces animosity and harsh refutation, it is because he sensed intense anti-Venetian accusations in Quevedo's writings. Castellani reminds his readers of the controversy of Hispano-Venetian politics, referring to incidents such as the war for the annexation of Monferrato, tensions with the House of Austria, and above all, 
the supremacy of the Hadriatic Sea, on which Castellani seems to put greater importance, perhaps because it gives him the opportunity to attack fanatic and despicable Duke of Osuna. The arch enemy of Venice, Don Pedro Giron, Duke of Osuna, had carried out, in fact, a warmongering political action projected toward uh, the annihilation of the Republic of Venice by snatching the hegemony of uh, the Serenissima at Venice in the Adriatic. After promoting an anti Spanish atmosphere and unmasking the three rogues, Castellani finally reveals the name of authors of the outrageous anti Venetian. Aviso, warning. The revelation matches in, in the text with the confession of a character from literary fiction that alleged Queen of Italy, who subjected torture and admit, admits that she is Doña Francesca di Quevedo, born in Spain. The injurious and parodic uh, feminine incarnation of the poet uh, Quevedo alludes to a commonplace in the representation of Quevedo, which is probably related to his usual way to wear a long tunic in the style of the clergy, uh, perhaps to hide the problem with his feet. Once the identity of Quevedo was revealed, Castellani launches into a degrading and destructive satire against his rival. We can see the parodic feminine representation of the poet in the very moment of confession. And first, he mocks uh, Quevedo's noble lineage. I'm going to skip a little bit because of due to time. And after discrediting his enemy, Giacomo Castellani turns to other topic of Quevedo. He's supposed, uh, he supposed passion for occult sciences. Indeed, it is uh, disseminated in the cultural environments of that time, and especially the idea of cultivation of the humanities and the interest of interest in astrology and magic. For similar reasons, Gavetto's enemies used their political cultural interests to the point of caricaturing him as a magician or necromancer who used the occult to plagiarize the will of the Viceroy of Naples. Castellani seems to share this opinion on the ridicule, ridiculous and irrelevant sketch of Gavetto's personality. Castellani tries to insist that Quevedo uses black magic on the Viceroy uh, of Naples, Duke of Osuna, through the use of animal allegories to symbolically denounce the Duke's violent behavior. Castellani made uh, satirical attacks on Osuna's own bellicose politics, seen as one of the most representative figures of fraud and oppression practiced by the Spanish rule in Italy. Castellani identifies the Viceroy of Naples and accuses him for plundering Sicily during his previous Viceroyalty. His offensive accusation continues with increasing tonality in the epilogue of Castigo Esemplare, where the motive for the deception concocted by three Spanish scoundrels is revealed, guided by Doña Francesca, you know, Don Franc uh, Francisco Quevedo, and persuaded in the name of national honor by some ministers of the Iberian monarchy, the three criminals admit to having acted with the sole purpose of restoring the reputation of Spain. Reference to the cause of the entanglement and allegorical motive is common in anti-Spanish propaganda. It allows Castellani to renew his critique of uh, Spaniards' bo uh, boastful nature, always prone to cultivation of appearances and to disguise the truth. The accusation against the Doña Francesca, to whom Castell uh, Castellani attributes the leadership of the deceptive policy against the Republic of uh, Venice, Carlos Manuel and the uh, Queen of Italy, reflect a uh, denunciation of Quevedo's preeminent uh, pre social status. After sidetracking with a brief invective against the malevolent Hispanic chronicles, Castellani once again attacks his favorite target, Francisco de Quevedo, Doña Francesca, who at the end of his confession, he insists in his guilt until he declares to have acted as a beast 
and without having to resort to a, a magical art, in this case, carrying out the Soviet deception discovered by Delphi Council. Castellani's anti-Spanish attitude is disproportionate that it makes one uh, suspect the presence of innuendo much more serious than the simple and generic accusation of an anti-Venetian political propaganda literature justified by Quevedo in the cultural policy of uh, viceroyalty of Naples. Specifically, this is Castellani's complaint of alleged implication of the poet and his accomplices in the cl uh, climactic uh, episode of that year, the conspiracy of Venice on Ascension Day, 1680, uh, 1618. An episode that uh, despite the time has left is still wrapped in the darkness of po uh, polemics and conflicting hypotheses. Castilla Exemplare manifests itself as a text with a dual purpose. On the one hand, uh, to rescue Carlos Manuel I and the Republic of Venice, saving him from the reproach done by Spaniards by means of clever retaliation against Spain of the same accusation. And on the, on, on the other, to avenge the Serenissima, the Venice, for the conspiracy of 1618 by denouncing the direct involvement of alleged author of the Republic of Venice, Venecia, Francisco de Quevedo. Whether or not Quevedo's involvement in mysterious Venetian events, it is a fact that his diplomatic career was marked indelibly by the issues mentioned here, and at the same time, harsh criticism and resistance, such as Giacomo Castellani's uh, contributes to the fall of Viceroy Osuna and the consequent, uh, uh, consequent interruption of Quevedo's Italian experience. Thank you very much.